Aloha, I'm Brad Bordessa from liveukulele.com. Welcome to part one of a three-part series on reggae strumming. In this video, I'm going to talk about the basic reggae chank, or the skank. Um, this is a simple strum that is more complicated by how it's applied inside the bar of a piece of music. Basically, all you're doing is strumming on the two and the four either down or up, it's it's up to you, it can go either way, but two and four of a song. So if the song goes one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? If you wanted to strum up on the two and the four, you could do that as well. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Pretty simple. That's the main idea of the reggae style, is the guitar in pretty much every song is doing that. Sometimes the keyboards are also playing that part, but in this case we're probably ripping off the guitar part for most of, say, Bob Marley songs or Steel Pulse or whoever. Um, so that's all fine and good, but let me try giving you an example of two different styles of playing the chords and the strum. Right? Here's what I was playing first. Then here's the alternate version. Right? In one, I'm stopping the chords early, and in the other, I'm letting them ring. Letting them ring is how you'd probably approach this at first, and that's fine. Um, it's actually probably the better way to get used to this strumming style, because then you can be focused entirely on where you're strumming and the motions and that kind of thing and you won't be worried so much about the decoration of the strum per se but once you get this down and you can play one two three four one two three four you're going to want to try and put some effort towards muting the chords and making them stop sooner so there's a couple different ways to do this and the first and most simple is by muting with your strumming hand you strum and then you open your palm and place it against the strings in between the strums. Right? Nothing too magical about that. You can also do it if you're strumming up. It's more natural that way because as you strum up, you need to drop your hand back down. And as you drop your hand back down, you can just go to that mute rest position with your palm on the strings. Right? So that's the basic version of that one. The second way to mute a chord, and this doesn't necessarily apply to notes, but it also can kind of translate a little bit, uh, is a full chord mute where you play, you intentionally play a chord that uses notes on every single string, and then you release your fingers of your fretting hand when you want the chord to stop. Okay, for instance, a lot of you might be familiar with this B flat shaped C. It's basically a B flat moved up two frets, right? And it becomes a C, it sounds like a C chord, it looks like a B flat. But because I'm covering all the strings with this chord, if I release these fingers, not all the way off the strings, but just enough so that the fretting contact stops, I kill the sound of the chord, like this. Just by lifting off that little bit between a fretted note to just resting my fingers on the strings where it's just a muted sound. If you lift off all the ways, um, you'll get string noise and it won't be quite as clean. And then you also have to worry about holding your ukulele up more and the neck falling down when you do that. So, when you release the chord, just release enough so that the strings become muted. Like I said before, this has to be done with closed shape chords, right? It's got to, there's got to be a note on every single string, otherwise you end up playing things like this. If you were to try and do the same technique on a normal C chord with your third finger on the third fret of the bottom string, 
You only have one note that you're fretting, so you're only gonna be stopping one note if you lift up. It doesn't have the same effect. All I'm muting is that bottom string and it just kinda doesn't work too well. So using all four strings for a note gets you a nice solid brick wall stop on the chord. The third way you can mute is with your pinky or another unused finger on your fretting hand. This is by far the more advanced technique, but if you can get it figured out and use all these three kind of in combination, you're gonna really have a lot more control over when your chords start and also when they stop, which in my opinion is almost as important, right? So let's, um, just for kicks, let's go back to that um, B flat shaped C chord on the third fret. If you notice, I've got my pinky free. So just like with the other muting technique, you have to fret every single note. In this case, you have to always have your pinky free, no matter what's happening. But this also works with open string chords, if you'd like. So, what happens here is you play your chord, and then you rest your pinky gently onto the strings. And the pinky acts as the buffer and stops the strings from ringing. So in this case, you're not lifting your fingers up, you're just dropping your pinky on to the strings. Right? This is tricky because you're really leaning on your different fingers being able to move different directions and different places at the same time, and it really takes, takes some work and some coordination to get this dialed in. But it's well worth the effort if you can get it you're really, really gonna be just a total mute king and you can play all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, so, you can also do the same idea with your third finger or really any other finger you have left over from a chord. So say, just for kicks, I was gonna play an F chord. I could use, instead of having to use my pinky, which is good, if you can use your pinky, that's great, but you could also use your third finger or both of them. So if I wanted to use my third finger, I honestly can say I don't do that too much because that feels a little awkward. I'd rather use my pinky because that's what that's what I use most of the time. And usually if any finger is going to be free from a chord, it's going to be your pinky. So, you know, nine times out of ten, it's more likely that you'll be able to use your pinky if you're using the three other fingers, if that makes any sense. So, moving on from there, by being able to stop the chords like that, you can apply that to the reggae strum and make it much more convincing. Instead of everything ringing out long like a normal ukulele strum, you're gonna be stopping things intentionally and that tightens up the sound and really sort of feeds your rhythm through a pinhole of precision. So, there are of course different lengths you can let the chords ring, right? If my time is like this, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, right? That would basically be every chord I'm playing is ringing the full length of the beat. So I play, I count one, then I play on two and let the chord ring for the full length of two, but when I get to three, I stop the chord. So this is kind of the, you know, the lesser of sounds you could have for reggae. So in some cases you're gonna want a really extreme sound, and in some cases you'll go more the gentle route like this. So by playing the chord for the entire length of the beat and then stopping it when the next beat comes along, that's probably the more gentle approach, right? So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This is probably a good place to start experimenting with your mutes because as you count on timing, your strum is gonna happen, and then your mute is gonna happen when the beat drops, right? So it's kind of a tick-tock thing, and you can keep the time by having these two actions happen. Mute, strum, mute, strum, mute, strum, mute. Um, so that's beneficial in that case, but as you improve and get faster at creating the mutes, whether it be with your, the palm of your strumming hand, or by lifting off on the chord, you can make the mute happen faster and the chord will ring for even less time, right? So if I really cut the, the chord short, you know, that might be ringing for 
maybe a 16th note or an eighth note out of the entire bar. Uh, so there's a whole spectrum of different mute timings you can, you can play with to make the reggae have a different feel. Uh, but in general, the shorter you make the chord, the more precise it sounds and the more, more of a driving feel it's going to have on the song. Uh, so most of the time when I'm playing reggae, I'm really trying to bop, bop, bop with precision, real, really lock in that rhythm because that's my part. Typically with, with reggae, especially when you're just playing ukulele, you're imagining everything else happening. You're not trying to really make it all happen on one instrument. You're, you know, you're imagining things, you're pretending you have a bass player, you're pretending you have a drummer, and the ukulele is just one part of that. And because the feel is so strong and it's such a signature sound, you can kind of get away with it just playing ukulele chanks by yourself. But that's the basic idea regarding a straightforward reggae skank. Um, check out the next video. I'm going to talk about how to play a more Jawaiian slash island style version of that strum. Until next time, aloha.